Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Hearts of Iron 4 Black Ice with me, Alpha Pi Omega and Germany. So, first of all, I truly did not intend for the first episode to be nearly two hours. Uh, it's just how it went, I guess. So, so to those of you that, that didn't need that large and in-depth uh, exploration of the mod, I apologize, but to the rest of you, I say, now we know. Now we know what we want to do, and the time has come to do it. But before we jump into that, I still want to mention a couple of things I did in between the episodes so that you do not get confused. So let's get right on with it. First of all, however, I have to say big thanks to Karl Lindov, who actually saved this Let's Play, even though he might not have realized it by posting a simple comment. He actually told me something that I completely missed, and that's the fact that the historical units that you can see on the map here uh, have been automatically removed uh, or disabled automatically in the game, and you need to turn the historical units on before you start the uh, playthrough. So I had no idea that there was this restriction now and him pointing it out actually made it possible that, you know, I just restarted the game, quickly did everything uh, that I had done during the exploration episode one and, uh, you know, now we're where we were before. So yeah, big thanks to Carl. I truly appreciate him pointing it out and uh, thank you, mate. Really, really did me a solid. Okay, so, uh, what I did in between episodes, well, first of all, I uh, organized our armies, uh, I know I started with that during uh, the episode 1, uh, but now we have two army groups, we have the Heeresgruppe A, which has the 1st Infantry Army, the 2nd Infantry Army, the 3rd Panzer Army, or Tank Army, and the 3rd, oh, sure, that's, uh, that's supposed to be 4th, 4th Mountain Army. And then we have an Army Group Deutschland, or uh, Army Group Germany, or Heeres Group Deutschland, depending on how much you want to butcher which language, uh, which has the 31st Defensive Army, which contains all of our garrison units. So I went uh, by a simple logic. I wanted the generals that participated in the invasion of uh, Poland to be leading the 1st and 2nd Infantry Army. I already mentioned that the 1st Army is going to be led by General Johannes Blaskowitz, who is my very favorite German general due to his actions. Uh, and I added uh, General Gerd von Rundstedt, who also participated in the attack on Poland. And according to the game itself, he is the author of the famous quote, We should have known better after the first war. <laughs> so... I like him already, but he was um, he was uh, kind of active during the war, uh, died in the 50s, I believe, and yeah, interesting general as well, uh, check him out. For the Panzer Army, we got General Heinz Guderian, who um, was actually the father of the tank divisions in Germany, uh, and for the Gebix Army, we got General Ferdinand Schörner. I actually need to check this guy, I didn't uh, recognize his name, but just by checking his stats, he is amazing. He's level 4, has a mounted on a free trade, a ranger free trade, giving him huge bonuses in forests and mountains. And he's also an infantry officer and has the commando trait and winter specialist and can get additional bonuses. So he is an absolute ace as far as a commander for the uh, Mountaineer army goes. So, you know, he is more than welcome uh, to be one of our first generals. By the way, I remember that I mentioned in the first video that Field Marshal Werner uh, von Blomberg uh, is not going to make it uh, to the start of the First World War. And that's true. Uh, Hitler actually removed him in 1938 because he was uh, speaking out against his actions and the actions of the Nazi party. So when it came out uh, to the public knowledge that uh, his wife, and I mean Field Marshal uh, Bombergs, uh, was an ex-prostitute, uh, he was discredited and removed from the army. So he never participated in the conflict. We're probably going to get an event about it down the line. Okay, last but not least, uh, the general uh, that's leading the uh, defensive army, or Verteidigungsarmee, 
I hope I said that correctly, which is a defensive army, is Erwin for Witzleben, a really known general as well. He has pretty good traits in uh, the game, meaning that he has the... Oh, he has nothing. Really? Why did I assign him then? Oh, because he's an infantry officer. Yeah, okay, I assigned him because I like him and he's an infantry officer. So, yeah. So we get the generals up there. Now, as we restarted the game, we have a number of uh, specialized historical units, which you can see are marked by special icons here. They, these divisions cannot be trained, and you should not touch them, basically. They will be automatically upgraded according to historical situations. So uh, I'm happy to have them. I assign them all to uh, Blaskovitz, so he is going to uh, lead them. And we'll see what's going to happen to them. Most of them are probably going to get motorized as we are going to go through. Uh, some of them might be turned into mechanized units or, you know, combined arms units. We'll see. We'll see. I don't know that much about uh, these divisions to say for sure. Okay. So the army is ready. Uh, we've also redeployed uh, the Air Force. We got them... Well, let's check here. It's going to be better. We actually uh, have now three full fighter wings uh, and a couple of fighters in reserve. We got two full wings of tactical bombers that actually changed my opinion a bit. And I've put the naval bomber uh, over here so that it can reach the North Sea without any problem. And I put the two wings of tactical bombers here because they're gonna cover the Norwegian coast and the, uh, what's this one called? Dutch, German, Denmark coast. So we'll have them patrolling here and the naval bombers are gonna be patrolling in the North Sea. Uh, we also got uh, quite a lot of air wings of the cool air support, which is five, five of them. They're located in these areas. Each one of them has uh, 50 planes, which is what we intended, and we got a couple of spares in reserve. So the Air Force is ready. We'll need to train them, of course, but uh, that's that. And as far as the Kriegsmarine go, uh, I did the reform that I spoke about. We now have the High Seas Fleet or the Hochse Flotte uh, ready. It's um, composed of the... Actually, no, you are not supposed to be there either. Uh, you're going to the hunter killers. Yeah, so the high seas fleet for now is going to be composed of the two uh, Pocket battleships that we have of the Deutsche one class and uh, the accompanying Lloyd cruisers uh, we have the uh, Unterseebootsflotte, which is the submarine fleet here already. And we have a third fleet, which is sort of a reserve fleet, where we have separated all of the units. And uh, I'm going to pull them from there once I can find good use for them. So, for example, we, here we have a ton of uh, escort ships. We have a ton of torpedo boats. We got some uh, battleships of the Deutschland class, which is the old one. And we have one extra Emden cruiser class. I removed this one because it's super slow. And changing the engine on these ships is a nightmare. Uh, where is the engine? Here. So if we wanted to change this one, for example, to a stronger diesel engine, it would cost 3,000 um, points of naval work. Considering the ship itself cost 3,688, that is not a good idea. So I don't think that we have any way to improve this. You had what? It's the steam turbine engine. Yeah, it's it's just not worth it. It's too expensive. It's more expensive than the ship itself. So it's just gonna be in reserve. Maybe we're gonna use it as a patrol in the Baltic Sea. Who knows? But I'm gonna, you know, reach into these uh, fleets or reserve fleets when we have an actual idea of what to do with them and how to refit them. By the way, you will notice that we didn't have uh, any destroyers on the list. That's because all of these are going to be built. Uh, the destroyers are called Zerstörers in German, and we have a number of 1944s and 1944As in um, you know, in production. So these ones are going to be constructed soon and we're gonna attach them and upgrade them and work with them as they come out. And same way as submarines, you know. By the way, I upgraded the, uh, or upgraded, reorganized the production list as well. Uh, we have the fighters, uh, naval bombers and uh, medium bombers, so aircraft at the top. Then we got the things that goes to our infantry units, field uniforms, SS uniforms, 
Ah, guns, machine guns, anti-air mortars, infantry guns uh, following it. Then we got the garrison equipment, support equipment, recon equipment, mountain warfare equipment, amphibious warfare equipment here as a new thing. Cavalry horse equipment, motorcycle equipment um, coming afterwards. Then there's the artillery, mountain, white, uh, white anti-tank, white artillery, medium artillery and heavy artillery. Then the transports, horse transports, white vehicles, trucks, uh, heavy trucks, artillery, prime movers. These ones are used exclusively for heavy artillery. And then we go into the fighting vehicles, so armored cars, tanks, and the last but not least, trains. So you can see that these are, uh, you know, organized in a way that is going to allow us to easily um, work with them and, you know, find what we need at any time because there's so much going on. Uh, first things first, though, we are going to remove the Panzerkampfwagen and Eins A production because I don't want that. But to make sure that it's not going to go to anything else, I'm going to put the uh, Eins B uh, on top of the list and give it the two extra factories from this one so let's remove it i don't know why we're still producing the old tanks so we're going to just produce the upgraded version uh, which is much much better and uh, we're going to get more factories as we're going to go through the construction and focus tree so yeah cool i think that's uh that's probably all there was to say before before we start. Oh, also I uh, went through the decisions. Uh, there are a couple of ones here that are interesting to me. First of all, I found that there's an increased operative uh, option here. So we're going to get that one as soon as possible. going to give us an extra operative. Focus on people problems is my favorite uh, decision from the political actions because it gives additional uh, weaker stability just for the cost of political power gain, which is amazing. And then there's the improve worker conditions and train the workforce, both helping with stability and other stuff. So these are more of a backup if we really need to bump stability, but most of it are gonna go with the focusing on people problems. I also went with trade uh, as we did it before uh, in the first episode. So we got Kingdom of Romania providing us with fuel and we got the Republic of China providing us with tungsten and we're importing some rubber from Kingdom of Siam and chromium from Turkey. So I guess that's all. Uh, that's all there is to say and we can unpause the game and see what it's gonna throw at us. Um, no outdated equipment other than shapes and we're producing some things that we do not need at this point which is fine. That is fine. So I wonder how many torpedo bolts we got um, back there. My biggest uh, biggest issue now is going to be to get the Sharn Horse uh, from the event and start building those as fast as possible because we need to get them up and running uh, quickly. And later, uh, later looking at the focus tree and following the list that I made for myself. So here we got the Algemeine SS, which gives us a half a point of stability and unlocks demand from the SS decisions and unlocks Waffen SS Division Builder. I actually don't know what's the demand from the SS decision. I checked that there's nothing like that here. Yeah, but there's some. Um, oh, yeah, they gave the military build up. Event. Amazing. Okay, so we can use this one to get extra units here. Cool. So they that um, trick that Karl Lindorf told me about actually makes this happen. Awesome. 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 So we finished the Algemeine SS. The next in line is the Kriegsmarine, Wehrmacht Commando and the Luftwaffe. Uh, Luftwaffe Commando, which are the command forces for well, basically our three branches of Wehrmacht. I'm going to start with Kriegsmarine because that one gives us a naval dockyard. They're all really quick, uh, just seven days. And once we get all three of them, we're going to get our first extra research slot for land doctrine, air doctrine and naval doctrine. So let's start with the Kriegsmarine Commando, which is going to give us a naval dockyard. So let's go. I'm going to speed it up a bit now. 
By the way, one thing uh, that I should mention before we access that. Oh, okay. We can already do this. There is a special SS uh, division. Um, well, Waffen SS division builder. That's basically what this is exactly. SS pop-ups. Huh. Okay. It's going to give me, I guess, some notifications. So we can get three SS divisions already. So Wach Battalion LSSAH. The Liebstandarte SS Adolf Hitler was founded in September 1943 as Adolf Hitler's personal bodyguard formation. It was given the title Liebstandarte Adolf Hitler LAH in November 1943. On 13 April 1944, by order of Himmler, the regiment became known as the Liebstandarte SS Adolf Hitler. In 1949, the LSSH LSSAH became a separate unit of the Waffen SS aside of the SSTV and SSVT. Hmm, not sure what that is, but okay, let's get them. And here we can get the SS Totenkopf Verbände. So uh, I'm not sure if you guys know who these guys are, but the Totenkopf were the death squads of the SS. These guys were responsible for. Uh, running the uh, you know concentration camps uh, Treblinka, Dachau, and so on, including Oswiecim. So, not good people. On 26th of June 1943, Himmler appointed the SS Oberführer Theodor El Elke as commandant of Dachau prison, one of the first Nazi prisons. It was created to consolidate the many small prisons that had been set up by various police agencies and the NSDAP to house political prisoners. The organizational structure Elke instituted at Dachau stood as the model for all later prisons. After 1944, Elke was named commander of the SS Toppenkopf, Totenkopf, which means death, death, uh, death heads, I think, Verbände, SSTV. The SS formation is responsible for running the prisons under the authority of the SS and Himmler. Known as the Death Heads Unit, yeah, that's what I said. The SS TV was first organized as several battalions, each based at one of Germany's major prisons. Leadership at the prisons was divided into five departments, Commander and Adjutant, Political Affairs Division, Protective Custody, Administration and Medical Personnel. By 1945, Himmler secured Hitler's approval and the finances necessary to establish and operate additional prisons. Six prisons housing 21,400 inmates, mostly political prisoners, existed at the start of the war in September 1949. By the end of the war, hundreds of prisoners of varying hundreds of prisons of varying size and functionality had been created, holding nearly 715,000 people. So let's get these guys out as well. And then there was the Verfügungstruppen Reich das Reich. The SS Verfügungstruppe was formed in 1944 as combat troops of the Nazi party, the NSDAP. On 17 August 1948, Adolf Hitler decreed that the SSVT was neither a part of the police nor the German Wehrmacht, but military trained the men at the disposal of the theater himself. At the time of war, the SSVT were to be placed at the disposal of the army. The SSVT were involved in the German invasion of Poland in September 1939. By 1940, these military SS units had become the nucleus of the Waffen-SS. Okay, and that's all that we can get for now. And here we got the event regarding the Scharnhorst Gneisenau. Scharnhorst Gneisenau, 28cm main guns or 38cm main guns. The Scharnhorst class battleships were the first modern battleships to be built for the Kriegsmarine. They were built as a response to the French Dunkirk class battlecruisers, themselves a response to the German Deutschland class Panzerschiffe. Pocket battleship. The Scharnhorst class is armed with nine. 283mm 11 inches guns in three triple turrets. Plus, uh, plans were made to upgun them with twin 380mm 15 inches guns, but with the outbreak of the war, this never happened. So, let's fit them with the bigger guns. I think that's gonna give us a bit more oomph. And here's our new units. So, we got the Wacht 
Leibstandard the Adolf Hitler. Okay, that's just a garrison unit. Here we got the Toten Totenkopf Standard 1, 2, and 3. Okay, these are just regular units. And then we have the SSVT Standard Germania and Deutschland. Okay, these are motorized, I guess, fairly capable units. They are supposed to have some engineer company support anti tank, so they might be of use. So let's put these all under the command of 32nd. Um, let's call this Waffen SS. Not sure who would do well with them. We need someone who is good with infantry and would give a defensive doctrine. Walter Model. Politically connected. Okay, that makes you a general of the Buffen SS. And you're going to be assigned to the Harris Group at Deutschland. And we're getting unfulfilled import requests. Kingdom of Romania is not providing us with any fuel whatsoever. Ah, okay, they started to trade with too many people. And almost all of them. No, all of them have actually higher trade influence, so this is not going to happen. Never mind then. Uh, let's try to import some from Venezuela. And I guess that's it. There's nobody else that can actually provide us with fuel except the United States. Okay, we're going to monitor this, see if we can get more, but... Okay, well, the fuel crisis is starting a bit early. Not happy about that, but what can you do? So let's speed up the game a bit. How's the factories? Okay, this is looking good. We got two full lines and Brandenburg is being built by four civilian factories. So at least we got that going for us. Okay. Prepare for the 1936 Winter Olympics. Oh, wait, that just reminded me. What about the... Sharnhorst, do we have them here? Yeah, we do, okay. You guys are going at the top of the list because you are the most important ships that we have here. So this is uh, the first one and the second one is actually a bit more into its production by at least a few days. So let's put you here as well. You are going to be our priority ships. Awesome. So what do we have here? Prepare for the 1946 Winter Olympics. Uh, Karl Ritter von Halt, a member of the International Olympic Committee, has reported that we must finish our preparations for the Winter Olympics due in February at the Garmisch Partenkirchen in Bavaria. In 1941, Berlin was awarded the 11th Olympic Games, and thus Germany was also granted the right to host the 4th Olympic Games, Olympic Winter Games. Uh, they have a lot of typos here. Olympic Winter Games unanimously awarded to Garmisch Pan Partenkirchen. Parten, yeah, Partenkirchen informed the Baron Lefort. In a telegram on 7th of June 1943, Garmisch and Partenkirchen had prevailed against their competition Schreiberhau and the Braunlage. In the course of the preparations for the major sporting event, the two communities were merged to form the market town of Garmisch Partenkirchen on 1st of January 1945 against the resistance of the market town councils from Garmisch, who only bowed down because the Minister of Interior, Wagner, threatened them of being sent to prison in Dachau. <laughs> oh my god. Well, I'm telling you, the Nazis didn't joke around. By the time of the games, uh, by the time the games would begin, the Olympic ski stadium with the large and middle Olympic ski jump, also the venue of the opening and closing ceremonies, as well as the start and finish of the cross-country skiing competitions, and the Olympic artistic ski stadium would have been built in record time. The Goodyberg for the slaloms and the Kreuzek for the downhill runs were chosen 
For the first time at the Olympic Winter Games, speed skating and ice shooting competitions as well as the bobsled races took place on or at the Arizaze. 28 nations, 755 participants, 17 disciplines from the expected 600,000 spectators will set the new superlatives, especially the final day with the special jump and the closing ceremony in front of an expected 150 thousand spectators will remain as a record. 150,000 people is amazing. The Soviet Union has announced they will not attend and the US participation is still uncertain due to growing movements calling for a boycott of the game. So we are ready or use this as a propaganda. Let's use this as a propaganda as the Nazis did in the real world. And the League of Nations. Ito is strongly condemned for using chemical weapons in Ethiopia. In response to Ethiopian appeals, the League of Nations condemned the Italian invasion in 1945 and voted to impose economic sanctions on the aggressor. The sanctions remained ineffective because of general lack of support. Although Mussolini's aggression was viewed with disfavor by the British, who had a stake in East Africa, the other major powers had no real interest in opposing him. The war, by giving substance to Italian imperialist claims, contributed to international tensions between the fascist states and the Western democracies. The use of chemical weapons further escalated the tensions in 1946. And we finished the Kriegsmarine Commando. The Anglo-German Naval Agreement we secured in 1945 allows us to expand our naval gr Navy greatly. We should spare no expense in doing so. So we get an extra naval dockyard in North Ostpreußen and Pomeran gets one shipyard and we get a bonus for naval doctrine. So next uh, let's go with the Luftwaffe Commando I guess. Uh, that one gives us two extra air assembly plants uh, which is good. 40 air experience and two extra mm, bases. One in Niederschweizen and one in Brandenburg. And Württemberg also gets two air bases. Okay. So let's go with Luftwaffe Commando. Slowly working our way through this. So, are we starting to build? Yeah, we're starting to build the Scharnhorst class. 17th of July 1942. That's not great, but at least you're using chromium. You're also using capital shipyard capacity. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're still far away from the improved fire control system. Actually, uh, I checked that the Scharnhorst class were finished, two of them. And also two of the Bismarck class ships were finished. Uh, the Hindenburg, or also called, called H class, were only planned and never finished. Nor were the other ships that I can see here. I'm not sure about the Derflinger, but I don't think so. Uh, but the, the Bismarck class was the last ships that were actually constructed, and only two of them. So that's actually... Quite good for us that we are going the historical way, or at least I'm hoping it's gonna go our way. So how are we doing in production here? Yeah, horse transports are nightmare as they usually are. Light artillery, not that bad. Infantry equipment should be fine. Yeah, 51 days. Uniforms the same. Uh, SS is fine. Mountain warfare is gonna be an issue. Yeah. Transport trucks, also bad. Support equipment, not that bad. Recon is fine. And naval bombers, 170, because we need to fill this uh, air wing that we have in North Germany to 200 as a first step. Okay, well, we finished the Luftwaffe Commando. The Anschluss Treaty of Versailles completely forbade Germany from having an air force, but German pilots continued training in secret. In 1945, all pretense of obeying the Versailles Treaty were dropped and the German Reich proudly announced the official establishment of the new German Air Force, the Luftwaffe. So we got six air bases, two air assembly plans, and we have a new chief of air force available, Robert Ritter von Greim. Bad weather penalty lowered by 10%. So last one is the Wehrmacht, no not Wehrmacht, uh, Oh yeah, Wehrmacht Commando, okay. Wehrmacht Commando. Oh, I would expect this to be called the Herr Commando. Interesting. The Treaty of Versailles once limited the German army to a mere 100,000 men, but we have 
covertly circumvented this limit for over a decade. In 1945, Hitler openly announced that the Reich would reintroduce conscription and quintuple the size of its army. To shed the memory of the weak Reichswehr of the Weimar period, this grand military force was christened with a new name, the Wehrmacht. Actually, if I'm right about this, the Wehrmacht is all three of them, the Kriegsmarine, Luftwaffe and Heer together. So, kind of strange that they have this, like, a Wehrmacht, um, but sure, why, why not? I mean, who am I to criticize that? He said after criticizing it. Oh, hey, we got four ships already uh, finished. So we got some small subs. Uh, it's, I well, don't know, 1150 kilometers, that's not bad. If we station you somewhere, probably in Norway, you could most likely hunt, for example, in the Denmark Strait. Uh, let's assign you as a new submarine unit here. Where is the submarine here? And you're gonna have a name of the third U-Boats Ausbildungsgruppe. I'm gonna be the third one. And we finished one of the escorts, the F2. Yeah, these ones are really good, but I'd much rather have a third rack here that would hunt subs. Well, we'll see what we can do with this. Hey, another one built. Awesome. So let's put you on the escorts. And that should mean that we have actually full production now of the Scharnhorst, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. So one is going to be finished on the 22nd of April 1940 and one on 22nd of June 1940. Uh, doo -doo -doo. That's not bad. I think that's actually pretty cool. If we can add the Bismarcks here, that's gonna be fine, but they're using a ton of chromium and we don't really have that much capital shipyard capacity left, so we'll probably be only able to build one more capital ship at the same time, so I guess one more Bismarck then. So the Wehrmacht Commando has been finished giving us a reset slot here in Hessen for World 1, World War 2, Air and Naval Doctrines, and it also gave us 25 army experience and a new chief of army available. He increases division speed by 4%. So this slot is going to be interesting because it gives us access to the doctrines. I like that Black Eyes actually left this as a research uh, because that helps, you know, with the sheer amount of things that you can get here. So. We are already locked into the mobile warfare. That's not bad, you know, that's just how it is. But we'll have to choose whether we get defense in depth, prepare defense or elastic defense. I'm more inclined to prepare defense. I think the Germans would go with elastic defense, historically, but the prepare defense goes better with my playstyle, giving us extra defense, soft attack, and then bonuses to tanks, then organization, and then defense to infantry. Now the elastic is mostly focused on mobile divisions. Yeah, we're definitely not gonna go with attritional containment or defense in depth, but it's between prepared and elastic defense. Uh, but I'm what I'm gonna start here is I'm gonna go with command. Because command gives us an increase in daily command power gain and gives us max experience limit by 25 and increases the leader experience gain. I'd like to get at least two levels in this, making our armies uh, have 14 divisions instead of uh, 12 and giving us an additional command power gain of 0.2 per day. And this one also increases coordination. Organi yeah, and they all give uh, some bonuses to HQ units as well. Initiative, organization, organization, organization. They're pretty good, but I really think we should start with command, so let's go with that. I mean, you know, that's our prerogative. So now that we finished uh, the um, 
commandos and got our reset slot. I'm gonna deviate a bit and go with the enter the rhino end, which is going to give us a huge amount of production back. Uh, we will gain back our demilitarized provinces. Uh, it's gonna give us five military factories, 120 political power, a bit of army experience, and uh, it's gonna increase the world tension sweat, but that's fine. So let's go with that one next. So what do we have here? Your uh, how many? Okay, we're fine. I was wondering if we will not lock everything with these four capital ships, but yeah, this one is gonna be done in a couple of days, 12th of February, so it's actually really quickly. So Graf Spiekos and Admiral Hippokos. So you're actually a Panzer ship and you're a cruiser. Interesting. And already outdated. And we're short on something. Chromium. Oh, but that's because we, yeah, that's because we're increasing the investment in chromium. But that's fine. Um, I think the penalty here is so little that I, it's not worth investing in that. How much are you getting? Seven point five percent. Yeah, that's that's good. That is fine. We'll be we'll be okay. On fourth of February, we are going to be done. This one is probably requiring chromium just as a base, so it won't increase with more. Yeah, it's not increasing with more uh, dockyards. So once we remove this one, it's going to be good. And then we can focus on the smaller ships. So the fuel situation is still not the great. Trade mission. A top class trade delegation returned from their mission today. According to the report, we can look forward to a new and advantageous arrangement for mutual trade. So trade relations with whom gets better. I don't know. The following SS units are available for deployment this month. SS Verfügungstruppe Brigade. Check the Waffen SS Division Builder. Yep, we're gonna go there right now. Uh, where are you? You're not here at all. I guess that might have been an old pop-up then. <laughs> weird, weird, weird. Uh, one thing that I haven't noticed is that you can have the access to historical tanks uh, here as well, not only ships. Uh, which we are going to take massive advantage of. Now I'm looking forward to the Panzerkampfwagen 2A, uh, for which we are currently researching the chassis. I know that we need just the chassis, I already checked, so once we get that in 64 days we are going to start production of this old but beautiful tank. Chaplin's Modern Times Modern Times is a comedy film written and directed by Charlie Chaplin in 1946. His iconic Little Trap character struggles to survive in the modern, industrialized world. The film is a comment on the desperate employment and fiscal conditions many people faced during the Great Depression. Chaplin felt that those conditions were created by the efficiencies of modern industrialization. Shouldn't that be efficiencies? Effici oh, efficiencies! <laughs> I just misread that. Chapman began preparing the film in 1944 as his first talkie and went as far as writing a dialogue script and experimenting with some sound scenes. However, he soon abandoned these attempts and reverted to a silent format with synchronized sound effects. The dialogue experiments confirmed his long-standing conviction that the universal appeal of the triumph would be lost in the character ever spoke on the screen. Well... A little tidbit about the Great Depression. So how are we doing with... Okay, we're about half. I'm gonna end this episode when we enter the Rio land. The 1946 Winter Olympics. The opening ceremony of the Winter Olympics at Garmisch Partenkirche has begun. After a quick speech by Karl Ritter von Haut, the German Führer Adolf Hitler officially opened the games. Fourth German artillery guns fired salute and the Olympic flag has been raised. The athletes started marching in with Greece first and Germany last, raising their hands and saluting to their leader. German skier Willy Bogner 
takes the Olympic oath on behalf of the 755 competitors from the 28 competing nations. Alpine skiing makes its first appearance in the Winter Olympics as a military patrol competition will be held for the first time. A precursor to the biathlon. Okay, so they called it military patrol. Hey, extra stability. And League of Nations moved to the Palais de Nations. I'm not sure how to pronounce this. This is probably Palai, Palai de Nations. Since the time of the Roman emperors, the term palace has been used to indicate the physical seat of power. As is often the case in Western history, the glory of the Roman Empire inspired following civilizations, and the term palatium or palace never lost its ideological charge. Instead, it became part of the vocabulary of every modern language, employed to indicate the physical location of power. It in its early days in Geneva, the League of Nations Secretariat were quartered at the Hotel National. It was clear from the beginning that the hotel was ill-suited as an administrative building. When the Swiss authorities offered a site for a new conference hall, therefore, the League seized the opportunity. In 1924, the Assembly asked for a building which was to perform fully and adequately the essential functions and purpose of an Assembly Hall of the League of Nations. The general thought was that if the internet if the intentions of the League of Nations is to represent the Pacific glory of the 20th century uh, are sincere, then it is not possible to constrain such an innovative social organization to the straitjacket of traditional architecture. No colonnaded hall for bored sovereigns, but salubrious working rooms for the busy representatives of the various peoples. No dark corridors for the intrigues of diplomacy, but open glazed spaces for public negotiations carried by honest men. After starting building in 1941, now finally the League of Nations can move into their new home. And the League does so in troubled times. Not only have some members left the exclusive gathering, but with rising aggression, the League faces challenges nobody ever predicted so early in its short history. The future will show whether this palace stands the test of time. I'm not actually sure if it's still standing. Might be a good idea to check it out and see what it looks like. Never thought of that before. I mean, I visited the Euro European Parliament, or the Parliament of the EU, uh, but I've never been to New York, so I haven't even visited or saw the... Um, United Nations building there, not, a, not even speaking of this uh, building they mentioned. And hey, we can get our first spy. So, Brunhilde Brando, natural order, tough, tough. We need someone. Okay, Anton Daman has an infiltration expert. Infiltrator. Yeah, you're the one that has the skill we want and an extra skill, even if it's not the skill we actually do want. So let's get Anton Daman. His codename is Wolf. And well, we were talking about flipping Sweden, so let's start with that. We'll see if it has, if it has any, any chance of success. And that reminds me, we haven't started to uh, Start with the site for of Republic of Poland. That wasn't pop up here that I completely ignored. Still missing just the chromium. We have decisions available. Ah, we can go with the focus on people's problems. So let's do that. That is going to give us a weak stability of one. We're getting a decrease in stability uh, every week of 0.3 due to some of the traits that we have, as you can see here, unfortunately. So let's start focusing on the people's problems. Dance show. To entertain our foreign guests and in order to show of German culture to the world, we will hold a show featuring dancing girls. German womanhood will be on display. That sounds a bit wrong here. Okay, we no longer have effects of the winter heating. Yeah, that's one of the traits that we have during the winter, which increases the consumer goods factories and fuel consumption. And we get a private import. While on assignment, our foreign minister met with a private corporation and managed to secure a small deal for raw materials. Ah, nice. Chromium output plus two for 60 days. That should remove the insufficient resources. And the 1936 Winter Olympics closing ceremony. 
The Winter Olympics have ended with the closing ceremony in the Olympic Stadium, hosted by Ritter von Hout, who also gave the last winning athletes their medals. Norway collected the most medals for 15, followed by the hosting nation, Germany. So Norway got 7, we got 3 golds, we then got 2. Norway got 5 silver, we got 3 silver, and Norway got 3 bronze. Cool. So we get extra political power, lower world tension, and people like us more. And we enter the Rhineland. The Rhineland has been demilitarized since the end of the Great War. But this in South shows stand no longer. Germany is a sovereign nation and it's free to move troops anywhere within its border. So a huge amount of production has been gained. We get three new Herdinstellen, which are just defensive units. Uh, garrisons, so let's add them to the 41st army for now, and we get a bunch of extra factories. Now, most of these were assigned, I got one to the naval bombers, one went to the amphibious warfare equipment. Okay, we're getting 5.73 per week, that's enough, I think we're gonna get to like 2 per day eventually, even higher, so that's enough for our our plans and we get still two free fights okay trains are also being produced so what is the biggest issue for us right now horse transports definitely 450 days and i think transport trucks right yeah 553 days so we're gonna add one to transport trucks and one to horse transports to balance it out and we can set our next national focus so after Rhineland um, we would do well if we went to uh, get the road to autarky Göring's four-year plan and then the Bank of German aviation which is gonna give us another uh, research one but what I'm actually gonna do here is I'm gonna stay with the Kriegsmarine for a bit and we're gonna complete the Schiffbauer Satz plan because that's going to lower the icy cost for our ships we have a negative trade for germany which is called inefficient ship designs which increases costs of almost all of our ships and we need to modify this by this um well shift bowers that's one which is like a, a plan to build ships we're also going to get two extra naval dockyards which is amazing and one capital shipyard so yeah, we need this one as fast as possible. That's going to boost the production of our um, Scharnhorst class ships as well, which is something that's very nice and very, very much required for us because uh, the later we get these, the weaker our fleet is going to be at the start of the war. So let's hope that we can get them sooner. I'm actually thinking also of hiring uh, the ship designer as soon as possible to reduce the costs of the ships which unfortunately i can't hear but we could get the deutsche werke kill which would increase the dockyard output by five percent plus we're gonna be boosting the the f a dockyard output by getting what is it called military production that gives extra output for dockyards of five percent there's another one here so that's ten percent Plus, we're gonna remove that, uh, what was it, 4%? 4% penalty, so that's nearly 15%, and that should make it so that we have those ships already at the start of the war. Anyway, thank you very much for joining me uh, for episode number two. Germany is on its way. We have just entered Rhineland because it's ours, and we are going to use it for whatever we want. And in the next episode, we are going to focus a bit more on the ships because we need to build those things for the water that surrounds us. So anyway, till the next episode, you guys take care.